and then obviously the day goes from that to a pretty low point in the end. It's been pretty low. A very low. Doesn't get much lower. a pain I've never really experienced before. I was laying there thinking, you know, how long is the physio taking on what's going on? It probably it was probably five seconds, but it felt like five minutes at the time. And there's no other way to describe it except I just knew something wasn't right. Given the pedigree you've had at this level, you've played at this level over 10 years now, and like the goal scoring returns you have, you kind of have a, you pick the clubs almost. What was it that took you to Dartford? And what was it actually that wound up taking you to, to Worthing? Because you probably could have gone wherever you wanted to be on that. Yes, it's a good question actually. Um, I'd wind up, I've wound up leaving um, Billericay. Kind of disappointingly actually, considering my record up there. Obviously I had left at one point to go to Maystone and then returned. Um, and still continue to score goals actually, I kind of never missed a beat. It felt like they were trying to force me out almost. A new manager would come in, he wanted to get his own players in, the budget was trying to come down. Um, but just the way he worded it, um, you know, we want to keep you, but this is all we can offer. It just felt to me like, I think my time here is probably done. So the first person I called was, was Steve King, um, because he had helped me get my move to Hemel Hempstead. He'd done some, you know, agency work and with his contacts in the game, I know he's, likely to know people throughout this level he might be able to sort me out obviously that then became him getting me to come to Dartford and sign for him but yeah it didn't, didn't work out unfortunately I uh, had an injury midway through the first season just a minor one but I missed about six to eight weeks and he kind of never really gave me a long run in the team after that I still, I still score goals I still scored I scored a hat-trick in a cup final for him and won the golden boot for the year but I just never we never had the same um, and I never had the same confidence that he wanted me to play. It always felt like he wanted to kind of bring someone else in. And if he had no one else, then I'd be the main man. And, and I didn't really know why that was the case, but he ended up leaving. And, and once he had left at the end of the season and we lost in the playoffs, so I, I thought, do you know what? I, I had enough driving now, not just the driving, but the traveling and the hours it takes out of the house, which you don't really think about. First thing in my mind was, I want to cut down on traveling. Um, I did have a few offers from clubs in this league um, who called up, expressed some interest and I think I always knew in the back of my mind this was going to be my first choice. I just had a real good, real good feel about it. Obviously I've known the club, I got promoted the year before and scored so many goals and played such lovely football. Um, so that was a big part in it as well and it's just, it just felt right. That's the only way I can describe it really. It was just, it was just time for me to settle down into a, a better routine um, off the pitch. Yeah, just the general chats with Hinch and Nath that, that I didn't need much convincing really. What was it like for you in pre-season? You kind of come into this and experience what this team sort of does for the first time. How was that for you? Yeah, I touched on it earlier. I was I was surprised my very first session, I come down a couple of times actually in the, in the off season. Um, we were doing like optional sessions. It was mostly youth team players here. I'd, I'd come along to kind of just get a feel of the place you know, get used to the surface, um, get some general fitness in as well. So I'd come down, didn't really know any of the players anyway. Um, I turned up on the first day and assumed it was kind of the first team thing. Oh, these guys look all young. Obviously it turned out it was the youth team and I was the oldest player there by about 15 years. And everything was set out, ready to go. And you'd go from one station to the next and everything was flowing and the drinks breaks were short. And it's not something you get at every non-league club, let me tell you that. And then once the first couple of pre-season sessions start and the teams in and you get used to how people are playing and names and stuff and it kind of, kind of picked up quickly. I was, it was a good group, everyone's really friendly. Um, obviously I had a couple of people here that I knew, Adam and Lab and Coxie and that was handy to kind of gel straight away. And yeah, just really enjoyed pre-season, it was nice doing it. Not having to travel hours home afterwards and you know, we had lots of games and that was enjoyable and just getting some minutes under the belt. I felt fit, I felt good, I felt, you know, it's, it's done me the world of good coming here and training hard and um, yeah, just really, really happy with how things went pre-season, scored the goals that I was hoping to do and um, yeah, I was, I was just feeling some myself it's going to be a really, really good season. What was that first day in, in the league like for you? Probably a bigger occasion than most places you'd been used to. Yeah. It's a big deal for the club. Yeah, it was, it was a great day, obviously. It was boiling hot, lovely weather. 
massive crowd, fantastic crowd. Um, everyone a bit nervous, not played at that level before a lot of the team and um, coming up against a, an established club in Dover who had been in the National League the year before. Um, I suspect we, we knew we were facing a tough test, so to get the early goal, settle everyone's nerves, kind of get the crowd behind us was, was, was an ideal start. And then obviously the day goes from that to a pretty low point in the end. Really. Pretty low. A very low. Doesn't get much lower. <laughs> Yeah. Then ball forward, looking for Riley Pease down the line, but Sterling's across to defend it. And then Robinson, and then... I can't remember a lot about the build-up, to be honest. I don't know if I've subconsciously kind of blocked it out. Um, I've, got, I've got the video of it, I can see the video. It doesn't bother me to watch it anymore, it's not one of them where I never want to see it again. The centre-half's coming towards me and I've just kind of just gone to block it and having played against this guy many times over the years, the last thing I would have expected him to do was try and, you know, chop me and go past me so then we just tangled legs and the re the next bit's a bit of a blur i don't really remember i remember i was on on the deck in really intense pain and it was about a pain i've never really experienced before um i was laying there thinking you know how long's the physio taking like, what's going on and it probably it was probably five seconds but it felt like five minutes at the time went back on the pitch and i just there's no other way to describe it except i just knew something wasn't right my knee felt numb it was heavy almost tingly to a certain extent. I was on the pitch, but you know, I was thinking, I hope the ball doesn't come near me. Like, you know, Obviously the bench realised and brought me off straight away and the focus was back to the game and trying to get the three points on the day. And then yeah, afterwards, the physio had, had done a lot of tests on my knee and stuff, but never really, um, he never mentioned any, any real concerns. Ended up going for an MRI the week after. It was strange, I don't think I or anyone really uh, anticipated the severity. Um, I'd heard some talk in the week via text and word of mouth that someone had suspected it was my, you know, cruciate ligaments, which I just paid no attention to. I thought, no, I would imagine if you're doing cruciate ligaments, it hurts a hell of a lot all week and you can't walk and, you know, how wrong I was obviously now. But I, I went into that MRI down in uh, Goring Hall in Worthing and um, fully expecting her to kind of say, you, you know, you've nicked your meniscus and, you know, six weeks for this to heal and you're going to miss a lot of football. and kind of come out um, come out of the scan and she said, do you want to come and have a look in the, in the, back, in the back room? And I was like, sure. It was, the, it was a Friday afternoon, it was her last one. I think she was just saying, you know, do you want to come and see what we do? And I was like, okay, no, yeah, fine. Wasn't particularly interested, but thought maybe she'd be able to give me my results quicker. And yeah, she just brought it up on the screen and said, this is your knee and this is where your cruciate ligaments are meant to be. And I was like, what do you mean? And she said, yeah, it's like you've torn your cruciate ligament. And even then I think, slight disbelief. Um, I didn't want to believe it until I'd had the report through from the consultant, um, but I guess I, sh I should have known at that time. And yeah, then it was just kind of, there's nothing anyone here could do to help me really. Um, there's, no, there's, no, there's no shortcuts to it. I knew that was, that was it basically. My season was, was over before it began and there was a long road ahead. The hardest bits for me was coming to the games and watching the lads play and knowing I couldn't. Um, even coming to training was tough at times when I just wanted to kind of get out there. The fact that they've done really well is has made it easier. Um, I want to be out there playing with them, obviously, but it's it's good to know that you know, obviously it hasn't cost the team too much. Um, it would have been a lot harder, I think, if they'd been struggling out there and I wasn't able to help. Um, but they've obviously been brilliant this year. There's a little bit of a wonder for you whether you do surgery or whether you try and do it naturally. How was it for you when you actually did the surgery? How did that all go? Yeah, it was, I just, it's, I'm, it's my personality. Once I realised I'd done my ACL, I wanted to know everything about it. I wanted to know all the experts in the world, all the players who've come back from it and how long it had taken them. So I just stumbled across this research that's quite big in Australia um, that you can heal, ACLs do heal. So I, I looked into that a little bit um, with basically just thinking, you know, if I have the surgery and miss a whole season at my age, Maybe no one will want me next year. You know, will I come back from it? It got to the stage where I had I had had the surgery approved by the PFA. 
I'd had a date from my consultant, I could do it in October, I mean, that would lead me into pre-season if I got the surgery done at that time. So I just said, you know what, I'm just gonna do it. I'll have that confidence in myself that my knee is fixed and I should be coming back better and stronger and fitter than before. I would dread to think the amount of people that would have said to him how many goals you would have had playing in our team this year, Jake, and I'm sure that's not what you wanted to hear. The time I've spent in the gym, I'm hoping physically I'll be in great shape next year. Um, and then if I can get some minutes in pre-season, that would be fantastic. The mental side of it is so much tougher than the physical that I'm sure that first time back on the pitch, whilst it will be a momentous occasion, will still be kind of you know blowing some cobwebs off and trying to get that trust back in the knees and then just see where I'm at from there really. I can't, I don't want to plan too far ahead in terms of the playing side of things because at the moment my, my sole goal is getting back into physical condition to get out back on the pitch. So um, as long as I'm staying on track doing that, then, then um, you know, I'll be in a good place.